the telegram said Harry Quayle. Harriet, my friends call me Harry. I don't even know you. I'll call you Harry, too. Look right there, sweetheart. You're not going to disappear on me this time. I'll give you $100,000 to help me find him, mate. You come highly recommended. Where is Mike Hammer? Mike's been kidnapped, Larry. You're serious, aren't you? Every man has his breaking point. Ah! He's my best friend. That's what I do. He is my best friend. For Mike, I'll throw away my badge. never a time for business. It's a time for memories. Those lived and those that might have been. As luck would have it, business was the reason I was there. The cable said, I need your help. 10 p.m., your office. Harry Quayle. Now it was two hours later. And I was running out of fantasies, I was running out of patience, and I was running out of cigarettes. midnight. The telegram said Harry Quayle. Harriet. My friends call me Harry. Oh. Huh. I don't even know you. I'll call you Harry, too. Huh. Look, Hammer, I'm a P.I. in a strange country who needs help. Now tell me to dip out or listen to my story, and I ain't got all night. Where are you from? Adelaide, down under. And what do you want with me? I've been hired to find someone. 
His name's Frederick Flynn. He's an author. So? Call his publisher. They've never seen him. The bloke's manuscripts are mailed from four different cities. London, Paris, Milan. I snapped some pictures of a Sheila who picked up his check out of post office box in Zurich. Tagged her to a bank, then she disappeared. Sorry. Doesn't sound like my kind of case. But not before I took these. Buy you a beer, Harry? this beer back home we'd use it to wash cars huh. surprised they let you drive <laughs> so what can you tell me about the lady in the pictures i've got a strong feeling she's gonna lead me to frederick flynn what makes you say that i've read and reread all his novels each one's given me a better fix on the bloke his last one gave me zurich zurich and what are you doing here in new york the kookaburra bar aloft at dawn the what it means i finally saw the light Flynn's publishing house is here in New York, and the woman in that photo is definitely a yank. I'll give you $100,000 to help me find him, mate. $100,000? Thanks. But I have enough trouble balancing my checkbook as it is. <laughs> How'd you get my name? You really do your homework, don't you? Like I said in the wire, you come highly recommended. What else you got? The number of Flynn's answering service. Yeah. All right, I'll check this out. Uh, you run down his publisher. Right. Now, this client of yours, why does he want to find Flynn? I don't know. Oh, come on. You expect me to believe that? For what the bugger's paying me, I didn't ask. Who is he? Really, Mr. Hammer? I shouldn't have to explain client confidentiality to you. I see. Okay. I'll be in touch with you tomorrow. By the way, where are you staying? Here and there. Hammer, I thought we'd travel this road together. Sorry, Harry. I always work alone. Yeah. That's good. Jenny. Yeah. I know. Whatever the Aussie's drinking, put it on my tab. Really? I sure hope you hit the lottery. answering service. One from his publisher, one from his editor, and one that read Chinatown Flower Mart, the last bloom of peonies from Canada, 6 a.m. I wonder what you'd say if you had the chance. Who are you? Laura. Laura. Well, Laura, for three years I've wondered if you were real or just a great fantasy. Hey, you 
when I buy those flowers and block my display. <laughs> place or mine? No, Frederick Flint's. All right, come on. The Australian consul isn't going to like this yeah, one bloody bit. What's he got to do with the sweet cakes? You call me that again, copper. Your shorts will be up around your ears. Oh, we got a real crocodile Dundee here, huh? Come on, gents, look. I'm a tourist in your country. Yeah, well, we'll make sure you get a good guided tour of your jail cell. <laughs> Maybe this will help. No. This will help more. Uh, uh, let me wait just a second. Now, before we get too involved, I want to ask you something. Who are you? I work for Mr. Flynn. How did you know that he wouldn't be here? We have a code. He contacts me through the service. The last bloom of peonies from Canada, huh? Is he the guy that you passed the envelope to in the flower mart? I don't know. I've never seen him. What? But he's very interested in you. Really? Haven't you read his books? <clears throat> Sweetheart, I read the sports page. So does Nick Steele. Who? The hero in Flynn's novels. A hard-headed P.I. who'd rather break down a door than knock. Sound familiar? Why should it? Mike. Nick Steele is you. Me? Does he, uh, does he wear a hat and a trench coat, carry a forty-five, and drive a blue 66 Mustang? That's why I've been following you. I was doing research. Research? That's it? Like Jane Goodall and the chimpanzees? I don't believe it. Well, tell me something. In the course of your research, how come you never spoke to me? I couldn't get involved. Not that I didn't want to. Yeah. Well, you could have fooled me, sweetheart. Every time I turned around, you were gone. But not this time. Come on, you're coming with me. Oh, where? We've got some unfinished business to take care of. Now, come on, let's go. I, I can't. Mr. Flynn may try to contact me. I'll be here. Don't worry. I promise. You better be. Mike. Please don't be upset with me. Hey. Any friend of Nick Steele's is a friend of mine. If someone had told me that once I got this close to her, I'd walk away, I never would have believed it. But I had to. I called my office and there was a message to meet the Aussie at my apartment.
Theater here on A&E. The stuff they had in that needle was deadly. The Yankees lost the World Series in four games. Pat was arrested for indecent exposure. And Barrington turned out to be my father. This facility was originally used to stress test astronauts, Mr. Hammond. Every man has his breaking point. About time you let me the bloody hell out of here. You're out of here when you tell me what you're doing at the flower market. Looking for the Statue of Liberty. With this? Yeah, I was going to fire a 21-gun salute. What kind of a permit is this? It's a private investigator's license issued at the pleasure of the Queen. Manhattan's a little out of her jurisdiction. That's no good here. I'll tell you what, gents. If you want to know what happened, bring up your friend Hammer. Mike was there? I should have known Hammer was in on this. He probably bought her the hat. Step inside. I think we should lock her up until we can find Hammer and figure out what's going on. Don't come the raw prawn with me, mate. And you won't be putting any shrimp on the barbie in the tombs. Yeah? What's the charge? No charge. Ballistics don't match. Can't we get her for being out after dark without a muzzle? It's not a bad idea. Okay, you can go free, but get this straight. Your permit's no good. You can't carry a gun. Your H-1 has been revoked, so you can't work here. Don't leave town until this is cleared up. Understood? Come again, mate. I'm having a little trouble understanding your accent. You got a wise mouth, lady. If your story doesn't check out with Hammer, I will personally come looking for you. I'll be waiting, mate. Now, once again, Mr. Hammer, where is she? Do you get cable on that thing? Ah! Just want to let you know that we can do this pleasantly. Or we can do it painfully for hours and hours. Then you better make yourself comfortable, pal, because we're going to be here for a long time. The girl at the flower mart. We just want to talk to her. With a needle or a cattle prod? This is an isolation tank, Mr. Hammer. We're going to put you in it. At first, you're going to feel like you've been buried in a black, watery grave. If you don't fight it, you'll feel intense sexual pleasure. And then total panic. Yeah, sounds like my first date. Put him in the tank. I hired you for your expertise and your reputation for confidentiality. Now, my confidence isn't shaken, but you were told to keep this low profile. Now I hear police, I hear murder. Well, hear this. I'm not making another move till I know what's going on. Shame. You make such nice moves. <laughs> Look, Harry. I don't know any more about this than you do. I hired you to find Flynn. Nothing's changed. Something has changed. My price just doubled or I do a walkabout. Okay, Harry. As you folks would say, I'll stay the game. Whatever it takes. <laughs> Whatever it takes. There you go, ducks. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm sorry I can't be more help. No, 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 I'm new here. Uh-huh. No, I haven't met Mr. Hammer yet. Pardon me? Oh, Laura. <laughs> yes. Bye. Oh, hi. Uh, Hammer? Oh, I, I thought the sign on the door said Mike. That's right. It's uh, short for Michelle. How'd you know it was me? Oh, well, um... The girls at the agency said you always wear a hat, huh? And... Oh, no. 
Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, the phone hasn't stopped ringing, and, um, well, uh... Uh, Veld is leaving Rio with uh, Jean Claudy, flight 208. Um, Laura called, Jeannie called, and uh, they all want you to get back to them. Uh, do you specialize in cases that deal with women? Seems that way, doesn't it, love? in there. Harry, what are you doing here? Harry? I thought you said your name was Mike. I don't care what his or her name is. I want to know where Mike is. Now, I've called his apartment and checked his bar. In every precinct in this town, no one has seen him. What the hell Hello? are you doing here, anyway? Looking for Mike. No, I knew to prove I told you and that Chambers. Barrington bloke the truth. Um, Pat Chambers? Yeah. Uh, you have a call? Pat, I, I thought it was yeah. a woman. Uh -huh. Yeah, you're kidding. Okay, I'm on my way. I got a homicide to cover, and you and I got a lot more to talk about. Any time, sport. Do me a favor, love. Track down the address at Bartlett Publishers. Okay. I'm so confused. I'm sorry, but policy is policy. And I'm telling you, this novel is so hot, it'll make the Thornbirds look like the Bobsy twins. Mr. Kirkwood sees no one without an appointment. Well, let me give it a whirl. He just might change his mind. I said you can't go in there. Good day, mate. You and I are going to have us a sit down. Dick, I mean, Mr. Kirkwood, off phone security. She reaches for that phone, and you'll be sporting a dinny has her. What a great word. If your novel is as colorful as your infants, I'll buy it. <sighs> Mr. Kirkwood, these pages are all blank. Well, of course they are. You can't expect a lady to bear a soul for nothing. Oh, that'll be all, Norma. <laughs> oh, but you strike me as the kind of woman who, uh, who wouldn't hesitate to let me know what she wanted. I strike you right, mate. I'm a P.I. tracking Frederick Flynn. I thought you might be able to help me find him. Half the literary world is looking for him, myself included. He's in danger. But he's our best seller. Very touching. You'll have to find yourself another meal ticket if I don't find him. All right, if anyone can get to him, it's Bob LeConte, his editor. He's working on Flynn's latest manuscript. I'll make an appointment for you. That's the spirit, love. Sorry I had to show my dark side. Three hours. His threshold for pain is very high, but we're right on schedule. Give me a projection for breakthrough. It's 
stress analysis profile indicates he'll tell us anything we want to know within 24 hours. Freeze dry him. I want it in 12. You're positive he'll give us the woman? He'll give us his mother. Good. Then we don't need LeConte anymore. I hate blackmailers. When we're done here, let's get rid of him. Sure. As I understand it, Mr. LeConte, you're the one who discovered Frederick Flynn. Well, a publishing house won't normally read a manuscript unless it's sent in by a literary agent. But the cover letter that came with Flynn's first novel was so intriguing to me, I had to break the rule. And it was your idea for Flynn to remain a phantom? Yes, it was. Well, maybe I can help. You know, Bob, there have been clues to the bloke's whereabouts in each of his books. Break another rule. Let me see that manuscript. Stop! That's out of the question! Ow! Take it easy, Harry. Ah. What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. I fell off a fire escape at LeConte's place. But don't worry, I buggered off before the compass got there. Well, you should have waited, Harry. You should have told them exactly what happened. Mr. Milo, that would have involved you. Mm. And you made it clear you don't need that kind of publicity. That's why I wanted to see you. I'm taking you off the case. It's time to forget about authors and books and killings. It's finished. For you. I don't close the door till I'm finished. It's over, Harry. <laughs> Not until me bruises heal. Ozzy jive. Does every bloke in this country enter a room with a gun? Listen, lady, I found Flynn's editor in the morgue, and this is the hallway of Mike's apartment. Maybe he bought a new hat. Mike doesn't buy a new hat unless the old one's got a bullet hole in it. Now, I want to know what happened to Mike, or you're going to lose more than the America's Cup. Keep your shirt on, Chambers. Believe it or not, I'm as concerned as you are. Prove it. The last time I saw him was at the flower mart. He found the woman I was looking for. Who was she? I wish I knew. I thought they'd gotten away. I'm not so sure. You bring in the police, they both may end up dead. I am the police and I'm already in. Now you onto something? I'm working on it. Give me a chance, Chambers. If he was my best friend, that's what I'd do. He is my best friend and I call the shots. Far away, mate. You get a lead, anything you call me. 
from Mike, I'll throw away my badge. Where are you staying? Mike's place. He ain't around. you all over the world, you know. The name's Quail. Harry Quail. I don't think you'll need that, love. I'll be the judge of that. Now, where's Mike? I have an idea, and so should you. Right. I've read Flynn's new manuscript. Look, I had no business giving that to anyone. Well, he didn't exactly give it to me. It's more like he willed it to me. Lacan's dead. Now, why don't you put that gun away, and maybe together we can find my camera if it's not too late. Look, love, we both read this. We both know what it's going to take to get Mike back. You're the one who can give it to them. Now, how do we go about it? I didn't trust you. Why should I? What other option do you have? Okay. We'll do exactly what Mike would want us to do. Call in Pat Chambers. Frederick Flynn wrote a fictionalized version of an actual murder, an unsolved murder. It happened in Greece, and there was a witness. Now, when Flynn's book hits the market, everyone's going to know who did it. That's the person they're trying to get. And that witness is in Canada. And Flynn is the only one who knows where. And he would never betray him. So that's why they grabbed Mike. That's what I'm saying, Mike. Why? Because Mike knows where I am. She delivers Flynn. Flynn gives them the witness. Their problems are solved. Let me get this straight. These guys want Mike to tell them where you are, right? Right. So they can force you to lead them to Flynn. You're on a roll now, mate. So Flynn can finger a witness to nail them for the murder in Greece. A murder that Flynn wrote about in his latest novel. But Mike would never give anything up. You have to kill him first. No. There's a way. Trade me for Mike. Ah, we don't know who they are. That's my problem. Leave it to me. I know who to call. It wouldn't do any good, love. They'll kill him anyway, and ultimately you too. She's right. The trick is to get someone on the inside to help Mike. Bingo, Chambers. I reckon it's about time for the sting. You got guts, love. He must mean a lot to you. He does. Just hope I can pull it off. I've never done anything like this before. Don't worry. First time's always the scariest. You'll be fine. How's that feel? Okay. How's it look? Like you added an inch to your waistline, but you can afford it. All right, Captain. You should be getting a signal now. Check. How's she doing? Aces. Chambers! Chambers! What is all this? Requisitions. That I can see. Supply says it's for Hammer. What gives? Mike's been kidnapped, Larry. For what? Ransom? You couldn't give him away. You're serious, aren't you? Yeah. The lady from down under, I'm not surprised to see you're involved in this. Mr. Prosecutor, I'm sure I can explain everything to your satisfaction. That's what worries me. Ease up, love. Harry. Larry. I'm sure we'll find a way to communicate. Make your call. Mr. Hammer, I have good news. You 
your solitary confinement is almost over. Who are you? I'm your host. You're getting your roommate. I can't, but you proved to me Mike's alive, and I'll give you Flynn. She's worried. Move it! Chambers, they found the bug. The bloody sting worked. Yes, Mr. Hammer. No matter what I say, Mike, trust me. If you want Flynn, let him go! No, no. You give them Flynn, they'll wipe the slate clean. Mike, I have to. There's no other way. Flynn's staying at his townhouse, 27 Green. Now just stand up. Theater here on A and E. Get your name and number. Well, I was thinking more like your name and my number. So what, say, Frank? You let me in, and we have us a blistering hot Aussie weekend. Sorry, Harry, but what goes on in there is top secret. I can't let you in. Oh. I understand. Oh. It's like football, mate. The rules are different down under. Laura. Mr. Flynn, I'm sorry. I had no choice. It's okay. It's okay. In like Flynn, huh, Werner? You gonna fall for this? Fall, Mr. Hammer. All the way to the bottom. That guy's a cop. Yeah. And you're all busted.
call services later. Let's go. Keep an eye on her. Get it? Good day, mate. Just wanted to pay my respects before they put you and my fee on ice. Harry, one phone call to my attorneys and the ice melts. You'd never get odds on that in Monte Carlo. That wasn't Frederick Flynn you brought in. That was Captain Chambers of the NYPD. Doesn't mean a thing. I own some of the most powerful men in this country. But you don't own me. I do now, mate. <laughs> don't count on it, pal. shot, Hammer. Right between the kookaburras. Harry Quayle's case was closed and she went off to celebrate in the best way she knew how. And I was going to celebrate in the best way I knew how. Isn't going to show up? I work alone. Mike, I'm Frederick Flynn. I know. How do you know? Hey, I'm Mike Hammer. We never had our champagne. We didn't need it. Until now. Tell me something. Laura. Is that really your name? I wanted a drink, but I knew I couldn't swallow because my heart was in the way. One day I would find out why she had to go. Until then I knew that every time I thought about this night, I would remember the sweetness of the moment and the pain. Who says we Yanks can't hold our liquor? <laughs> well, Harry, I owe you one. Good old sport. You can take me pals home. <laughs> I don't owe you that much. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, if you're ever in the outback, love, look me up, eh? You got it. You're a beaut, Mike. You're not so bad yourself, Harry. I knew it was going to be one of those nights. 
when the world would look better through the bottom of a glass. But I had a feeling I hadn't seen the last of the Aussie. As for Laura, she said we'd meet again. And somehow I knew we would. Sunday, an a and special presentation brings you the epic saga of one of the world's wealthiest families, the Gettys, a tragedy of riches at 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific. Now, Russian agents hunt for a friend of Remington's, next on a and